Welcome to Mars. What a strange place. What an incredible place. Look at this. This is insane. If you see my last video, you would have seen it ended in complete disappointment. The volcano was terrible. The journey was hell. But where I am right now, the three day journey is completely worth it. I've arrived on Mars, check it out. Look at this. And it's gonna get crazier. So stand by for some of the strangest and best content I've ever filmed. Let's do this. By the way, it's 8 a.m. It's 38 degrees. And in about an hour, it gets to like 42 and keeps getting higher and higher. This place is just unbearable. It's been a crazy, crazy three days. I've never experienced heat like it, but yeah, can't wait to get out of here. But what a place this is. Honestly, this is the weirdest place I've ever been. I can't get my head around where I am right now. This is just bizarre. This might be one of the weirdest viewpoints I've ever seen whilst traveling, but definitely one of the best. Check this out. God, it's like I'm on an alien planet right now. This is insane. Look at this. Look at this, it's like walking on glass, it just snaps. Was it? Oh, hold on, Aussie's going for the, Aussie's going for the liquid stuff. What, if you dip your leg in, you'll lose it? Really? What is it? The liquid. Is it acid? This is acid. I was gonna walk in it as well. <laughs> yeah, don't step in the liquid stuff, whatever you do. God has only just told us don't go in the liquid stuff. But it's everywhere. You need to be careful here. Shit. Stinks. Is this sulfuric acid? Yeah, it sounds sulfuric acid. Look at it all. This place is weird. Look at this. How do you think of it though? Beautiful. Very I'm nice. I get my wedding photos here. Oh, really? Hmm. Like this guy's doing now. Yeah, if you dip your foot in that, or your leg, or your hand, it's gone. Melts away. That is mental. You can see the smoke in the distance coming off it as well. Look at that. Hopefully it picks it up. This is weird, it's all bubbling up. Oh, holy shit. Thought I fell in some acid then. Oh, and again. Gotta watch your step around here. Me. I don't know if you can hear this, but listen. It's all just bubbling up all around us. This is weird. Oh, it full on stinks over here, like, oh, Jesus. It smells like rotten egg. It like burns your lungs. I wish I could explain to you what this stuff is and what it, you know, what it does, but I don't have a clue. I'm way too dumb for that. And my guys don't have a clue as well. And they barely speak English, so. You have to research yourself. Dalol. Type it on Google. Look it up yourself. Pretty incredible. Aussie, the Jamaican king, up, has brought a drone. <laughs> Mate, get that bad boy in the air. Johannes, verdict. What do you reckon? This is incredible. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Stinks. It does stink, yeah. 
Is it? Yeah. What, it's saying over here? Yeah, it's over here. Land that bastard. Hot here. Yeah. It's so hot here. It's just overheating, overheating. I'm gonna put green at just in the <laughs> That's what happens when you fly a drone for one second here it's in the hottest place in the world. After one second, overheating turned off, back in the bag. Jesus. Goodbye weird yellow place that I have no idea what is. We're now going to head back to the car and drive through the salt lakes that we came through on. Insane views, like, wait till you see this, it is incredible. It must be like 40 degrees now, it's unbearable. And the bloody Israelis are so slow. They try and get those cringy, like, couple photos. Oh, it drives me mad. Pathetic. Me and Ozzy went there, took a snap, pissed off. That's all you need. No. Cold day? This is not a cold day. Yesterday was a hot day. <laughs> Jesus. You are far, he's a hardcore. I hope this guy's gun is on safety. It's literally touching my leg. Oh my god, that is TTR, man. They're far. Yeah. Uh, I don't have camera to text how sweaty I am. I am fucking boiling. Checking the temperature now, 37 degrees outside. That's not true. Well, it is right there on, I can see it. No, I mean, look how sweaty you are. Yeah, sweaty so salam in 4K. No, stop. It should be higher than 37, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, it should be higher, yeah, it feels, it feels 57. So back there, it was like I was on Mars, and then within about two minutes, it's like you're on the moon. Look at that. Endless salt flats for miles and miles. Is he taking a shit? Right, everyone's getting their Instagram selfies. I'm getting back in the car. I've seen enough. It is boiling hot. I'm getting that AC. But honestly, this might be the most challenging place I've ever traveled. Up there with like Layla Dak. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a broken man. That was one of the most challenging four days of my life. Luckily, I'm so grateful right now, I'm back in the city of Addis, away from the Afari region, and in some cold air. Honestly, I'm gonna talk you through the whole thing. It wasn't safe what we went through. It was completely crazy. So let me sit down and explain to you what happened because that was an incredible journey. Okay guys, I am back in the city of Addis Ababa. Luckily, I am alive. I mean, we could have died. Like, what happened was, ah, I would never go back to that region again. As amazing as it was, it was not safe. You're gonna hear some stories now where it um, might put you off going, but don't let it put you off. Just when you go, make sure we take a better guide than we did, because we went with the complete wrong travel group. It was very dangerous. <laughs> And yeah, just do your research before you go to the trip um, where I just went. So basically when I was at the salt flats, my camera overheated and it shut down so I couldn't film anything else. Once we finished the salt flats, we drove about 14 hours back through the desert, just us two cars, stayed the night in Samara again, and then we drove about 10 to 12 hours back to the city of Addis. And this is where I slept last night. You can probably tell in the last three videos that I just looked completely dead, like drained, like no energy, like the tone of my voice was just completely gone. Honestly, it was unbearable there. Um, you may think I'm exaggerating and people have been commenting like, man up mate, it ain't that hot. You go to that region and you try film it. And honestly, it was, it was so hot. At one point it was like 53 degrees. 
I didn't even film it because I honestly thought I was going to pass out. When you just walk in, the heat, like, ah. You need to be there to witness it, but yeah, it was not a nice place to be. First of all, I'd just like to say I will never take this for granted ever again. Every swig of water I've had since I left that region, I do not take for granted. The things we've seen out there were mind-blowing. The lifestyle of those Afari people, those like nomadic lifestyle they live, Honestly, I've got the most respect possible for them. Absolute legends, how they choose this lifestyle. Um, I'm guessing they choose it. That's what people have told me. They choose to live this way. And he's like, you know, you've seen the videos. They live in these like tents in the middle of the desert, um, away from civilization in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, huge respect to those people. So I will never take this for granted again because I went through so much of that. And we ran out, which is a story I'm about to tell you. Okay, so let me just explain why I think that was not safe at all. Basically, we paid for two AC cars, and um, obviously you need AC. Me being a white pasty boy from England, we don't even get sunlight. So when I found out the AC didn't work in the other car, and we all had to cram in one car, I was fuming. For some reason, the other people in the tour group just accepted it. They're like, yeah, be fine, don't worry about it big mistake like we all were suffering the ac was good in one car but obviously it didn't work in the others so uh, yeah it was hell on earth we were all crammed in for the whole four days if you go into the hottest place in the world where it gets like 53 degrees you need an ac car it's as simple as that and we didn't get it we just got one ac car secondly we ran out of water so the guides that were taking us um, we brought loads of water but we caned it all in like a day so the second night when we were camping at the volcano i was so thirsty it was so hot went to go get some water and the driver was like yeah we're all out we're like we ran out of water and obviously fantastic we ran out of water we are in the middle of a desert hundreds of kilometers away from anyone no one knows we're there there's no phone signal so if we broke down the next day in the desert i don't know how long do you last without water in a desert five hours six hours i don't know but probably me, I'd last about 10 minutes because I was gagging constantly. So yeah, <laughs> we would have died, no question, if we ran out of water. Well, we did run out of water, but if the car broke down, then that's it, dead. Also, we were never provided with a security guard with a gun. Um, we paid for this. Um, they were meant to be at Samara, and they were meant to be with us driving all the way up to the volcano with a gun. Never happened. And when we're traveling up, people are throwing stones at us, throwing sticks at us on the cars. They like block the road and they have guns. So like, I mean, I've never seen so many guns in my life. Um, pretty much every local had one. And when we're driving up to the volcano, they're stopping the car, they're looking in, they're pointing the guns at the car, demanding like water and things. You know what I mean? Like when we didn't have a guard that spoke Afari and that's what we paid for. There's been times in the past where tourists have been kidnapped and killed in that region, so that's why I wanted a security guard. Never got it, paid for it, never got it. Fantastic. However, when we got to the volcano, a security guard did join us. He jumped in in the small city just before that, and um, completely pointless him being there. He had a gun and stuff, but it was completely pointless. He did nothing, because what happened was pretty horrible, because we were sleeping there, and at about 11 p.m. at night next to the volcano, two Afaris came out of nowhere with loaded AK-47s, pointing them at us, saying things. And luckily, we obviously had translators in the group. But you know what I mean? 11 p.m., two locals just came out of nowhere with guns, pointing them at us. <laughs> Turns out they were just security for the area, like guarding the area. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, people have been killed here, kidnapped. And I've just learned, like last week, two Chinese have been kidnapped in the same place where I just was. So, you know what I mean? And basically the guard that we had knew they were there and just slept through it. He didn't care. I was trying to wake him up and he just like, completely ignored me. Um, even the drivers that we were with and the locals admitted they were scared because they know about what could happen there. And um, yeah, just not a nice situation to be in. You know, guns pointing at you at 11 p.m. You're in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, turns out though, they were fine. They were um, just looking after the area, so thank God for that. And then obviously after the salt flats, we drove all the way back. Yet again, no guard with a gun. 
and locals were standing on the road numerous times with guns, pointing them at us, like demanding water, food, um, but unfortunately we ran out, so we couldn't give any. So yeah, not, not the safest trip, I'll be honest. I had a great time, uh, most intense experience I've ever had traveling without a doubt. Got zero regrets. Uh, Dalol was incredible. Unfortunately, the volcano wasn't what I expected, but you get lucky with these sort of things. But yeah, if you're gonna go to the Afar region and do this type of tour what I did, make sure you take a safe guide because ours was just not prepared for it. Um, wasn't safe at all and <laughs> we didn't get what we paid for. So uh, do your research and um, yeah, go with a safe guide. If I was you, just a good deed, bring tons and tons of water and just give it to the locals, give them food because they are poor people. Like I've not seen poverty like that, to be honest. It was um, quite depressing. They call it the Danical Depression. I had depression being there because you're seeing these kids running out there begging you for water. And we were giving water out, but obviously we're driving through the desert. We need some as well. If we break down, we need it. But yeah, these kids are running out, like they're begging us for water. So it was horrible to see it. And um, they're drinking like mud, muddy water um, from like these dirty lakes that are like around the Afari region. It's horrible to watch. So if you are going, honestly, bring tons and tons of water, like thousands of it. And just give it to the locals, they will love it. And yeah, it's honestly, it just, there needs to be something done about that because it was pretty depressing seeing it. Um, what else have I got to say? Yeah, zero regrets, had a great time, but just make sure you go with a safe travel group. That's it guys, I've got one last trip here in Ethiopia planned. Um, it's gonna be hopefully safer. <laughs> I am going to a pretty dodgy place, but it is touristy. People have been there in the past, so hopefully it goes well. But yeah, I'm going to be making about five videos there, so I'm pretty excited about that. Huge thank you to everyone that's watching the videos, the support I'm getting. Hold on, someone at the door. One second. Yeah, huge support to everyone that watches the videos. Um, it blows my mind, people watching it all around the world. It's, yeah, honestly, I really appreciate it. So uh, thanks again. A few more videos to come, and then I'm off to secret location. So, I'll see you then.